you are so mesmerizing your eyes. <laughs> Thank you, you must know that about yourself, though. Oh. Do you know that about yourself? You know what? I do not see myself <laughs> yeah, from the other yeah, yeah. side, from yeah. from your side, yeah. but uh, okay. but I should come see you more. <laughs> I was just telling her I'm mesmerizing her eyes. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not using them to hypnotize people. <laughs> yeah. What would your title be? What do you? What would you call yourself? What What would I call myself? Like what that's a good question. Like, <laughs> oh, regression therapist. Regression therapist. Yes. yes. You know what? I'm just um, worried about the parking, so I have to okay. um, set up my alarm, and I have a new phone, so okay. please bear with me because this uh, this type of conversations tend to take your mind away completely. <laughs> Would you ever record like a hypnosis? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every session we record. Oh, you do. Every session. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But the session, uh, you know, uh, contains five parts which is the interview when I speak with the client. They usually um, prepare a list of questions that they have for their own higher consciousness. And I tell them just look into all the aspects of your life and see where you need clarification and write that question as specific as possible because the more general the questions, the more general the answers. So they will usually have at least one good list or two and some people come with even more questions and in one session they can complete everything so I encourage them to look into every every little corner to clean it up ask all the questions you have and bring clarity bring the light into all the corners this is the part of the interview we work with the questions and uh, after that we do the session do you deal yeah. a lot with um, hypnosis around weight loss no really no nothing specific like that because the way it works is uh, I would just encourage them to look into the cause rather than uh, uh, it's not hypnosis actually it's, it's not no okay. it's not a hypnosis it's a deep meditation it's an astral travel mm. a guided meditation and when I say guided I don't guide them what I'm doing is I'm using Dolores Cannon's technique to bypass the logical mind when you visualize you bring your awareness from the logical mind the left brain into the right brain which is the creative imagination. Actually, that's scientifically proven. The creative imagination, the center in our brain that that is responsible for imagination is the same center that is responsible for the memory. It's interesting how it works because I'm also guided by my own higher consciousness. And from there, their higher consciousness is taking them to those events in the past life that happened with reference to the questions. So the questions serve not only for, for the discussion, for me to understand better, to create a map for me, but also it puts an uh, intention, conscious intention, so the consciousness takes them into those events in a past life. So when you say past life, you mean past life before this life? Mm -hmm. But it could be in a childhood. We never know where the issue is. Okay. Originated. There is a generation now that don't have past lives. And my oh. son, I discovered that because oh. my son is is in that generation. This and what these people... Life. How do you know? Yes, because I did a regression therapy oh. for his uh, condition. He had an allergic reaction that nobody could understand and we could not treat. Thank to that, although he went through a lot of suffering, um, I became a homeopath because the first time I saw some relief in his condition by treated by by a homeopathic doctor and this is how I got into the whole holistic medicine yes. so you see how it works so the generation that are coming straight from the source they are able to somehow retain maintain uh, their frequency so their molecules are already advanced kind of have to hear me energetically. <laughs> I understand, you have to get your vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Dolores Cannon was a, a hypnotherapist and she, by accident, discovered that state of consciousness, of a high consciousness, Eastern philosophy, meditation. She was able to realize the significance of it. 
We see that state of consciousness mm-hmm. every day. is right in front of our All eyes of and us. we don't realize it. Is it covered up? But what is it covered by? You know, when you mm. say it's covered, but what is it covered by? Life. <laughs> and, you yes, know, distraction. Yeah, distraction. Destruction of the, the mind, the thoughts of a low frequency, um, worries and the, the stress. And we are in the collective um, the consciousness and we are all guided, obviously by the media and, and so on into that con- into that state of consciousness and being on the lower frequency so your higher consciousness is in the high frequency now all the stress worries fear those emotions are almost like operating in a different uh, radio channel right mm, it's in yeah. a different frequency how can we see so this is what is blocking if we are talking about there is something that is blocking Mm-hmm. Nothing is blocking, but we are blocking ourselves, right? Because it's a choice that we can make. Turn off the TV, go outside and look at the reality and start <laughs> understanding that, you know, look, this is life. Hmm? This is reality. This is real. It's beautiful. The sun is out. The trees are blossoming. And if you look closer, you see how wonderful that is. How is that all just starts to unfold and you yeah. just connect it in that quiet state and that's it you're in high consciousness yes. voila you're there what is weight gain it's a mind state the psychology has a term of um, emotional eaters right you may not even be an emotional eater mm. and still gain weight is it retaining the weight yes the body is in fear is in fear is in fear. So there is a fear inside. What is the fear? The fear of the outside. It starts gaining. What is weight? I've asked protection. too many. Exactly. So yeah. why do I have to protect myself? There is, there is something that is it's threatening. The world is threatening. Allergies are the same mindset. If you have a lot of allergies, you become almost allergic to the world. Yeah, to life. So what is it about mm. life that is is so threatening to me so I would go into those mm. answers and when we go back into the events people will see that there are some events that happen in their life where they came to a conclusions based on what they see around them it doesn't even take a very traumatic event it could be just that you know the parents are working a lot. I was an immigrant into this country and I know how it affected my children that we had to work a lot with, with their father and uh, sometimes they would just stay home or we would take them with us in the car to work and my boss was very unhappy with that and she could see all that. I had, I had to bring her back and leave her. Anyway, it, we were in a survival mode. So children will pick it up and you come home and you have to cook quickly something and prepare and here in this society you become a a technocratic robot a biological (gasps) robot you're not a human anymore because the the corporations are just owning you when you go to work they have to own you now you work for them you have to make the money you get targets and so on slave to the system exactly let's take that setting and my daughter is all day alone. My only day off was Sunday because I worked until 6. The rest of the days I was working until 10 at night. She makes a conclusion, but what if she is younger than that? She makes a conclusion that I'm alone, my mm-hmm. mom doesn't pay attention to me. My tiredness she takes as a rejection. I'm not disposed always, I'm always worried. And she starts making conclusions that what if I do something for my mom to bring her attention and now I can get a little bit of attention and that attention is translated now into love and now what she translates in her mind is that I have to do something so I can get that love now when I do something that's the condition no? so now she comes from unconditional love because that's what she is now she's trying to figure out this world and immediately Mm -hmm. makes a conclusion that love is not unconditional love is conditional 
-hmm. And unless I do something, I'm worthy of love. So now she makes a conclusion. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. In a nutshell, this is our basic false belief, mind programming. Is that generally... Everybody. Everybody. Everyone. Yes, everyone. 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 So what is happening when we lost trust in unconditional love, right? Mm. Now we lost trust. What is love life? We lost trust in life. Okay, now we're going to go into dynamic physiology. <laughs> no, let's go there. <laughs> okay, it's not, not what they teach in medical school, obviously, but we are not just that body. Right. We exist outside this body, too. So there is so many elements. So there is an etherical part of it, which is the feelings and emotions. There is an uh, ego structure. So the I... Mm -hmm the individuality. So there's many, many aspects that are incarnated in this physical and they all come in their own timing. So by the age of 11, the child is more or less formed already. So the child will form all his perceptions, all his basic knowledge about the world up to this age. So this is where the allergies come because yeah. I lost trust. I lost trust in life. Mm. You know, I, if I lose trust in love, I lose trust in life. I'm unprotected. So mm. life becomes threatening to me. Okay. You're familiar with the term karma, which I don't like yes. to use. So you don't often. like to use. Why is that? No, because it's been corrupted a little yes. bit. It's so been turned into know. a brand. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> what is karma to me is incompleted events, emotional events, traumatic events that are incompleted, where we left or we blocked with the wrong perception of it. And will okay. the person that you're working with, will they be speaking? Is it a... Yeah. Are you talking back yes. and forth? We are talking the whole session. Are their eyes opened, closed? Closed. Okay. Closed. They are in the astral mm. traveling, let's say it that way. But in the background, they know uh, they are in the session. They know they are lying down here. Mm -hmm. They are in the astral body and they can see the event. And some people even participate in the event. It depends. Uh, some people see it like a movie. Some people mm. will be going back and forth into the character and then just an, as an observer. I had a person who uh, was able to see there are three parallel lives at the same time. Mm. Um, so now if we talk about time, and I'll just mention it quickly, <laughs> does not exist. Right? <laughs> it's, it's a good thing to consider. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's mind-blowing though when you think of things that way feeling and thinking are different mm -hmm. yet they work together really they do well. work together <laughs> but I'm just thinking when you said the feeling thing because there's some things that I want to feel that I have felt like a euphoric feeling and I know it's possible but feeling it is different than wanting to feel it so how do you get into feeling Regression. <laughs> I, I feel like for me, I feel I've always been curious about going into a regressive state. Have you ever watched the movie Audrey Rose? Mm, uh, no. But, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, that movie, it's an older movie from the 70s, deals with past life and past life regression, but it's kind of meant to be a horror film, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just to be real, was that a deflecting tactic? <laughs> she asked you how you get into your feelings. <laughs> feelings. Let me talk about movies and entertainment. <laughs> how do I get into my feelings? <laughs> Usually I avoid my feelings and I buy some ice cream. But I think that's true for most of us. You know, we yeah. really are not at peace with our feelings. We don't want to connect with our feelings. It's a very true reality. It's the way we are able to function, or at least for myself anyways. Yeah. It's the way I'm able to function, you know, with the day-to-day. -day. So, um, I had a lady who came to me with a very sharp pain in her uh, right cheekbone here, where the sinuses are. Mm -hmm. And she's been in uh, uh, painkillers medication for 35 years, so she wanted to get off. So, I asked her, how does that 
like feel to you? How does that pain feels to you? And she said, it literally feels like I have a knife in my face. Wow. That's how sharp it is. I just kind of made a note to myself that sharp pain, like a knife, if you study dynamic physiology, you understand that this is anger. I asked her about anger. I said, how was your childhood? She said, I had a beautiful family, uh, very nice parents. Um, I had a beautiful life. I had no reason to feel angry or anything. So, regression. We see an event. She's um, an indigenous woman, 16 years old, married to a white man, uh, both of them very, very young. And they were excluded from the tribe and they had to leave on the other side of the island and in fear to be killed any moment. She is the daughter of the, of the, the chief of the tribe. Eventually they get killed and she's being shot with an arrow in her face. <gasps> and because she's grieving over her husband and uh, it took her a very long time until she finally um, was able to, to transfer you know, to, to leave the body. And um, from what I understood, she was a very intuitive, very uh, consciously evolved being. Um, she had a lot of compassion towards her husband and a lot of love towards him. So all this time, she was grieving his loss. So I had to wait until she left her own body to ask her if she has any regrets about that life and she said no I lived from my heart I lived my truth and, and she was such a powerful powerful woman when she said that she didn't she doesn't have any regrets because I was still looking for anger right mm -hmm. and I said to her well now looking at these two beautiful uh, people in love that were in love and had such a beautiful love and, and they are so beautiful how does it make you feel and she said angry she said it makes me feel so angry and she started to cry mm -hmm. that anger out and she said, and I asked her what is she angry with and she said with the injustice she was a true avatar of the uh, collective feminine consciousness w what happened is that she stopped kind of in that grief, right, in that loss. So she blocked her anger. So there was still a suppression of self-expression. So through regression, she was able to actually open a little bit further that consciousness, right, that space in her consciousness where she realized that, wait a minute, my goodness, I am so angry. You know, and she just released that. This is what it is by karma, right? And she never had the pain again. Huh? Wow. The pain was gone. So the pain was kind of reminding her, you yeah. haven't completed something. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of things that I need to complete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so do we. And so do we. And I'll tell you about my, my experience too. But I want to give you another example. With the, just recently, I had a session with um, uh, a gentleman and uh, he saw himself in uh, ancient Rome, hiding in a cave. Um, he was a, a warrior, an, a Roman warrior, and he was shaking of fear. His whole body was shaking. I've never seen anybody shake that, that way. Uh, perspiring a lot and shaking of fear. So he was already blocked, right? The fear has that uh, quality it freezes you it blocks you he could hear the voices of the the guard that was looking for him and they were about to uh, find him and kill him and he's telling me I'm a traitor and they're gonna kill me because I'm a traitor and and he's full of guilt mind you the session was I didn't tell you why he called me he said that I have this guilt in me regarding everything that I do so I need to understand what that is. So I'm letting him feel his fear. And here he tells me I'm a traitor. I'm a traitor. I went against the establishment. I uh, went against the Catholic establishment, the institution of religion. 
And I said, what did you do? And he said, I know Jesus. He was Jesus' brother. And he still maintained the, the, in the past life. And he still maintained the memory of it. And the pure, genuine teachings of Jesus. And he said that, what I know Jesus, he's my brother. He never wanted that. And he said, what they are doing, they are using him. Mm. They are using him so they can enslave people. I have to die, he said. I have to die because there would be a lot of people that would pay a price for me if they don't find me. So he comes out and he gives himself. And they, they kill him. At that moment when he, he decides to come out, when he sees how many people he saved, because they were keep keeping the a whole village hostage for him. So there was such an incredible story. Hmm. But what I allow him to do in that session is to change the what we did. We changed the past. How did you do that? So he realized he was a hero. Okay. The shaking stopped. He felt so much dignity and he felt so much purpose in what he was doing he even told me this is why i came here for. what we are doing we are traveling into the events that are set by the intentions of the questions of the of the person and we are healing the past trauma we are completing those events and you accomplish this in one session with this person yes. is that yeah. usually how it works yes yeah. And that's why I tell everybody that just write down everything because you want to take advantage of one session. But I think that past life regression would be very helpful to me just because I feel like I have a lot I feel like I have a lot of karmic dust. You know? And I feel like just generally generally like in my experience I'm very drawn to to death and the idea of spirit and the idea of like history of things. I was looking at Dolores Cannon's stuff on YouTube and then I was looking to see if there were any practitioners here in Toronto and I found your name. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for myself I was looking for, you know, some healing stuff. But anyways, yeah, I, I, I want to... Um... Well, but there's so much more we have to talk about. This oh, yes, yes, this yes, is yes just for sure. The tip of the iceberg. <laughs> sure. will... Can I ask you where you're from, what country? I'm from Moldova, which okay. is uh, a part of Romania. It was uh, a part of the Soviet Union because Russia took that part, or Romania gave it away. So I speak both languages. Would you ever be open to doing, let's say, a regression session with myself and recording it, and then if I feel comfortable, airing it? <laughs> yes, of course. Because I would love to do a past life That's regression. Great. I mean, I don't, you know, maybe if it's personal like this lifetime, I'd probably be too personal. But I'm happy to air something about a, a past life. Would you mind if we took some pictures of you? Sure, let's yeah, take let's pictures. Take. Can we bring the painting closer yeah, to her? Yeah, sitting in the chair? Absolutely. I like how you're looking up. Are you seeing orbits? <laughs> <laughs> it's so odd. Before you got here, Jessie was in the hallway and I was in the kitchen and she was talking to the cats and I heard her say something to the cats and then I heard a voice answer her and I thought that maybe her mother was here or someone was here. It, did not, it wasn't her voice, but some, someone answered her. <laughs> I didn't, I, I couldn't make out, but I could hear it was a deeper voice. So curious to know more about myself. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to kind of dig deeper. Like really, really big present there, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, is that your phone ring? I love That's it. Awesome. I know. Times. <laughs> Hi, honey. I'm just finishing finishing up a meeting, and I'll be out in a few minutes, and I'll call you back. Okay. Okay. Bye, honey. Because it's overseas, I had to take that. Oh yeah, Sorry, of course. But... It's my twin flame. So your yes. twin flame. Let's <laughs> talk next time about twin flames. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do we all have one? Yes. Okay. There are methods to calling the twin flame, right? Oh my goodness, <laughs> twin up. flame. We're gonna have so much fun with wow. this. I love it. I love it. Because twin flames are crazy. <laughs>